I'm going to pull those leads out, put the meter off, and I'm going to spin it over. I've got a couple eighth to quarter turn screws here that allows me to access the battery. Okay, yeah, probably not a bad idea to disconnect the battery while we're in here. There are three screws then that I need to uh, remove to pull the back off so I can access the fuses. Three little plastic Phillips screws. Uh, they're not plastic screws, but they thread into plastic. Now, I said at this point I can separate the covers. All right, there's the innards. And notice this particular one has the fuse missing. This is the fuse for the high amps. This would be the fuse for the low amps and it's missing because place it was blown and there it is now one thing you ought to do before you remove the fuses you know maybe get your cell phone and take a picture or mark a diagram so you know what fuse goes where just in case you yank both of them out can't remember where they go in the future uh, if you're observant and you happen to have your case in place We'll see that the small fuse, okay, the low amp fuse, is slightly shorter than the long amp fuse. So if you attempted to put the higher amperage, the longer fuse, in place of the small one, I'm not going to say you're going to be in a bind, but hopefully it would be obvious to you that you have the fuse in the wrong place. But again, if you don't catch that little thing, you're liable to put the large fuse in place of the small one and the small fuse in place of the large one so uh, your ammeter is not going to do what it's supposed to so that's why I said if you got a cell phone before you take these fuses out take a picture so you know which one goes where and then we'll just uh, reassemble it to put it back together again and I'll show you that it will show a warning an audible warning and then the alternating flashing warning that we saw earlier Now, this is a good practice. If you're running these screws into plastic, let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. Um, all right, here's what the threads look like that are going into this plastic. One of the problems with this is uh, if you get them cross-threaded, chances are pretty good you're just going to pull all those plastic threads right out of that body, and then you're not going to have any kind of clamping force. So one of the things that I like to do as I'm putting these in. And again, this, this applies to dashboard screws that are again going into plastic. Uh, I like to place the screw where it's supposed to go. And instead of just starting to screw it in directly, what I like to do is to go counterclockwise with it until it kind of rises up and then falls back into place. I'm going to leave it set up for ohms. I'm going to move the lead to the big A. And here we've got the warning, both the audible and the visual there. Let's go back into milliamp. There you go. Again, I've got both the uh, audible and the visual warning there that my lead is not in the proper location for what my rotary dial is set on. All right, let me show you the last thing that I mentioned. Uh, as far as testing it, some of the older flukes don't have that audible or the visual warning, but they will allow you to test the fuses using the ohmmeter function. So again, I take the ohmmeter lead, put it, set it to measure ohms, I slide it down into that amp jack until I make contact with the contact. I get about 0.1 ohm here on the high amp fuse, and as I move it down through here, I'm going to show right about a thousand ohms 
through this fuse here. Okay. Now that's two different ways you can check to see if your flute meter has a good fuse or not, or a blown fuse, for the high amperage and the low amperage fuse. And thanks for listening. Well, thanks for watching, I guess. Bye.